Hello students, how are you doing? I know you must be uh, very much tied up. So here we go without wasting any time. We will be revising uh, a few concepts of SCMP. In fact, uh, we'll be revising, we'll be discussing RTP, revision test paper of November 23 attempt. Now guys, without wasting any time, we will be starting with question number 1. In every question as and when it is required, I will be discussing the concept with you. I will just keep on brushing up the concept with you. Question number 1. The board of studies at Country Law Institute has recently revamped one of its certification courses on law applicable to fintech transaction into law applicable to transaction involving fintech, especially an application of blockchain. CLI is uh, expecting increase in enrollment. It expects around 1000 candidates will enroll for the course in each of upcoming batch. Due to enhanced coverage of quality content, which is more relevant in current scenario. CLI has printing division which operates the printing press for the printing of study material only. The estimate cost of printing the study material for revised certification cost is 1750 per set. But 2000 is added to the course fee, 2000 is added as the course fee for the self learning material. Board of Studies always argue the cost of dispatching and posting the study material to candidate's postal address is always more than 250 in the majority of cases. Hence, 2000 subsidize the price and such difference is made from grants from the government agencies. So, you do not have to incur the cost, it will be given to you. Since the study material is developed by external resources, persons and industry experts Royalty has to be paid by CLI to such authors. Look at the breakup of cost. It is 560, 265 and 725. So, if I talk about the total 560 plus 265 plus 725, it comes to 1550. The total of fixed over it is 2 lakhs. is the fixed cost 1000 set of study materials are expected. So, 200 per study material can be 200 per student can be the cost. If you add it to 1550, you are getting the total of 1750, the breakup is set. It is a total of fixed plus variable. Now, question further says that out of 2 lakh, 1 lakh 20 is committed. So, can't be changed. That means, I can easily say that balance 80,000 is avoidable cost. Balance 80,000 is avoidable cost. Material cost are on CIF basis since the books are exempt from GST. Hence, credit is neither booked nor claimed. If credit is not booked nor claimed, that means I have to charge that cost to the customer. If I get input credit, that means it is as good as I am not incurring the cost, but since GST is not available, the input credit is not available, I mean the input credit is not available, it is as good as I am spending that cost. So, the cost will be charged to the customer. Considering the expected registration, director of BOS signed a requirement to print 1000 set and send the same approval to chairman's office. In meantime, government came up with a notification that grant and aids will be dispensed and CLI shall stand out at an autonomous and self-financing institute. Chairman is uh, concerned with the cost efficiency and uh, consider printing is uh, neither a value generating nor a strategic activity for CLI. Hence, it is beneficial to outsource printing study material. So, instead of manufacturing, instead of printing it in-house, we are planning for outsourcing. Mr. Gurumurthy, one of the members of uh, governing council opposed chairman stating that 
he is more concerned about the quality and confidentiality which is a basic core argument whenever it comes to the concept of outsourcing comes. Mr. Vyas, another member also argues that the cost of in-house printing will also come down due to learning curve but outsource supplier will keep on charging the same price. Like you already know one material takes 10 minutes my next material will not take 10 minutes it will be taking lesser time. My third material will take further less after say 30, 40, 50 the learning will stop but at least for the first 50 or the first 30 or even first 20 I will be able to save some significant time which will get reflected in in terms of cost savings. If that is going to get reflected in terms of cost savings, remember this is going to happen because I am printing for myself. When I outsource the work, that person may or may not pass on the benefit of learning curve. Hmm. Chairperson mentioned during the recent days while reading about the pros and cons of outsourcing contracts, he read that about gain sharing agreement. Gain sharing agreement? where you have two parties, they enter into an agreement without any uh, concrete term being decided. And if the vendor accepts something and if he is uh, capable of saving some cost or is capable of fulfilling his duties whereby the company is getting some benefit, some part of that benefit, some proportion of that benefit is passed on to the person. Are you understanding this? So, like for example, I am a production manager and company wants to minimize the cost. The company says uh, we want cost to be minimized. If you somehow you can apply some cost reduction technique. Now, remember cost reduction technique is something where I am going to reduce the cost without impairing the quality of the, of the material of the product. So, if I can successfully reduce the cost, I will be. If I successfully reduce the cost, I will be getting some proportion of saving as my revenue, as my incentive, that is gain sharing agreement. If there is a gain, it will be shared. As against the tender, the outsourcing proposal for Janta Pesh is also received. Thousand sets are to be printed and uh, they have charged us 14.5 lakhs. So, instead of producing it in-house, instead of producing it in house, I have to pay 14,40,000. Instead of producing it in house, I will pay 14,50,000 to get 1000 prints. Janta is in the business since last 20 years, renowned for quality. So, quality will be taken care of, that is what they are trying to say. Janta place is also awarded by uh, local government, other agency using uh, so, there is a social cause involved as well. So, if I am considering outsourcing from uh, non-financial factors, I will definitely consider this factor as well. You are working in a finance department as a management accountant and the chairperson wants you to evaluate. The outsourcing proposal from Janta Press uh, and advise uh, governing body whether the same shall be accepted or not. Are you boss, it is very simple. If I outsource, I will end up spending 14.5 lakhs. Let me find out how much I will incur if I do not outsource, if I produce it. So, my first cost will be 560, my next cost will be 265 and my third cost will be 725. This is bound to happen. Now, since I am going to outsource this, if I am not going for royalty, I need not pay the royalty to the concerned person now. So, 560 plus 265 plus 525, 1350, 1350 I will incur on 1000 plus I will have to incur this 80,000 cost. See, out of fixed cost of 2 lakhs, out of fixed cost of 2 lakhs, 1 lakh 20,000 is avoidable, that will be avoided. But 80,000 has to be borne by me, has to be incurred by me. I cannot avoid it. So, whether I 
produce the material by myself or I outsource it, I have to incur this cost. So, this 1350 into 1000 will be 13 lakh 50 thousand, will be 13 lakh 50 thousand plus 80 thousand, 14 lakh 30 thousand will be the cost for me. They, they are charging 14 lakh 50 if I produce in house it will be 14 lakh 30 it is advisable to go for self printing rather than outsourcing it. Now why are we subtracting this? It is clearly mentioned in the question that royalty is to be paid, royalties will be paid at the time of sale, it is not required at the time of production, we are trying to find out production cost. Production cost consists of material of 560, labor of 265 and uh, 525 is your variable over it figure. So, 1350 you are incurring for producing the product, producing the material. So, 1350 you will spend on producing in 2000, your production cost is 13 lakh 50 thousand plus unavoidable fixed cost of 80 thousand, any which way you have to incur. So, 1350 you will save, 1350 you will save plus 80 thousand. So, guys, 14 lakh 30 I am going to save. And I am spending 14 lakh 50. Sounds illogical. If I produce, I will end up getting, if I outsource, how much I will be saving? 1350 production cost, 80,000 fixed cost, 1430 will be saved, 1450 will be incurred. Now, there is no point in accepting the proposal. That was your first part. Second part, considering the facts mentioned in the case study argument raised by members of governing body, identify non-monetary factors, non-monetary factors for as well as against, non-monetary factors for as well as against, both are to be discussed. Now, non-financial factors in the favor, non-financial factors in the favor. Now, if I go for outsourcing, if I go for outsourcing, I can work on value engineering activities. That means, we can make sure that the quality product is procured, quality uh, material is procured, which is a part of my production process and my services will be better, my product will be better. There can be a triple bottom line effect since I am going to help people, planet as well as profit. Cost goes down, profit improves. If cost goes down, then which is not a case in this scenario, but then uh, you are supporting the environment because it is a eco-friendly organization which is saving some uh, papers, recycling the papers and of course, people, you are creating the employment for you are creating the workload for others. It will improve the environmental footprint of CLI. Then experience of Janta, the reputation of the company executing the job for us, reputation of the vendor is fantastic. So, we can definitely expect some good quality. Confidentiality is not the issue and then gain sharing. If the cost reduces, we can pass on the benefit to the concerned person. Now, let us find out some uh, aspects against. Today, you will get things done from them. What about future? What about tomorrow? So, is are you going to make a long term arrangement or a permanent arrangement with these people? So, reliability of outsourcing contracted to meet the timeline, delivery and continuity. Now, whether they will be able to deliver the the work, the outsource job, that is one thing. Secondly, can they be considered in my next need, because there has to be a continuity. If I outsource, my staff will be idle, 
and sometimes even for idle time they will be paid for plus there will be spare capacity so it's a criminal wastage of resources what have you planned to deal with such things and finally how much is your coordination my point number three is asking me advise governing body why do gain sharing agreement fails and what CLI can do to make gain sharing agreement work effectively the reasons for failure are various reasons actually and one of the reasons are the performance then poor drafting and structuring of contracts clueless careless implementation see sometimes sometimes it may so happen that you don't have a clarity of what you are going to earn you don't have a clarity about your remuneration so you keep on working accordingly but you don't find the right direction to be concluded lack of confidence it's basically uh, depends on the gain sharing agreement depends on the trust between mutual trust between the two parties if there is a little bit of lack of confidence among any one of them the performance will be affected how do we control these measures performance excellence must be the prerequisite you cannot give work or cannot outsource the work to a person who is new in the business who doesn't have uh, any prior experience or um, who is not known for his quality we be very specific about what you want there has to be a clarity otherwise ambiguity will lead to disputes in the future innovation okay if you are using some innovative technology then there must be a enough confidence confidentiality shared between the contractor and the contractee win win structure has to be drafted no you should negotiate rather than you know keeping a grudge in mind that i should have asked this i should have quoted this and then uh, define the length and mode of reimbursement to what extent the benefits will be shared what will be the amount what will be the percentage what will be the mode everything has to be decided quite clearly and that is your prerequisites and requirement for gain sharing agreement let's go to the next question guys the next concept is about oee overall equipment effectiveness where you do consider availability efficiency and quality sierra bearing balls uh, limited is a famous name for bearing balls and uh, we have recently joined manager and so and so and so from mr singh a plant accountant for mr sial came to know that since machines are of the latest technology and the workers are motivated due to the liberal uh, workman policy hence productivity and quality was uh, never an issue but availability is over lunch when mr sial greets mr kumar plant head he also expresses the worry of worry over excessive downtime and optimal use of uh, limiting factor so performance is not a problem efficiency is not a problem uh, quality rate quality is also not a problem the problem is availability now you understand if availability is a problem naturally your only efficiency and quality can will not make a huge difference so see the information your oee is 93.55 high performance rate 105 percent in terms of efficiency okay normal shift is 9 hours two short breaks of 15 minutes each so that comes to 30 minutes plus a lunch break of 30 minutes 
So, 60 minutes out of 9 hours, when you talk about 9 hours, 9 hours into 60 minutes, it is 540 minutes. Out of 540 minutes, if I reduce 60, my available time is 480. My available time is 480. Determine the unplanned downtime witnessed by the 10710M bearing manufacturer and advise Mr. Sial the best way to reduce the same. Measure idle cycle and apply gold ruts 5 steps that must be applied to remove the bottleneck at the Ludhiana plant of the company. Okay. First thing first, how much we have produced? Twenty seven two one six. So your output is twenty seven two one six units. Twenty seven two one six units. What are they saying about quality issue? 272 out of the total 27216 only 272 were found defective okay minus defective 272 so 27216 minus 272 26 944 26 944 must be your accepted output divided by 27 into 100 So, basically your quality ratio is 99 percent. Common sense it is, out of whatever you have produced, only 1 percent is rejected. That means 100 percent, that means balance 99 percent is accepted. So, your quality ratio is 99 percent. Your OEE. is availability, efficiency and quality. How much is OEE given? How much is OEE given? 93.55. Availability we need to find out, efficiency is 105 and this is 99, 105 into 99, so availability ratio should be 90 percent, are you understood this? OEE is a product of availability, efficiency and quality. 1 percent was rejected that means 99 percent was accepted. So, quality is 99 percent, uh, efficiency productivity ratio is given 105, total OEE is also mentioned which indicates that availability should be 90 percent, availability should be 90 percent. Now, out of total 540 minutes, 60 minutes you are not working, that means you are working for only 480 minutes. This is your planned production time, correct? This is your planned production time. Now, if you really want to have availability ratio of 90 percent, 
फोर एटी इंटू नाइन्टी परसेंट फोर थर्टी टू मस्ट बी द टाइम यूटिलाइज सो बेसिकली फोर्टी एट आवर्स इज योर एक्सपेक्टेड और अलाउड डाउन टाइम You understood what I said. There are total five forty minutes, nine hours. Out of that, sixty is unavoidable. Sixty is unavoidable. So available time is four eighty. Available time is four eighty. But I know I'm not going to use the hundred percent of it. If the available ratio is ninety percent, that means. 10% is allowed downtime which is 48 hours so that's my answer for part number 1 now in the second part they have asked us to find out ideal cycle time ideal cycle time means time taken to produce one unit now see you have 432 hours to work for You have four thirty-two hours to work for. Whatever you will be producing in four thirty-two hours will be the actual efficiency. Will be the actual time taken. Will be the actual cycle time. They are interested in ideal cycle time. They want standard cycle time. So let me tell you, your efficiency ratio is nothing but standard hours upon actual hours into hundred. If your efficiency ratio is hundred and five, standard ratio we don't know, but yes, we know the team has actually worked for four thirty-two hours. Four thirty-two into one zero five, four fifty-three point six hours should be the standard time. The productivity ratio is hundred and five percent. Actual time worked is four thirty-two hours. They are not interested in actual. Cycle time. They are interested in ideal cycle time. That means they are interested in standard cycle time. So, four thirty-two hours my team has actually worked for at one zero five percent of efficiency. That means ideally they must have taken four thirty-two hours to complete the workload of four fifty-three point six hours. So, how much they have produced? They have actually produced twenty-seven two one six. They have actually produced twenty seven two one six, and they should have taken four fifty three point six. That comes to zero point zero one six 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 recurring minutes into sixty. If I apply approximately one second per unit. Should have been taken, guys. Ideal cycle time they have asked for. If you divide, if you consider four thirty-two instead of four fifty-three, it will be your actual ideal time, or it will be your actual uh, cycle time. Ideal standard. It's not ideal. It's ideal. It's standard. So four thirty-two actual time. Since efficiency ratio is one zero five percent, I must have actually completed work of four fifty three point six. So I should have produced this in four fifty three point six hours. Each unit should have should have taken uh, one second. That's my second part. And in the third part, they have asked us to find out five steps to remove the bottleneck. Five steps to remove the bottleneck. It's very simple. They have mentioned this already. This is a theory part, so we can directly refer it from the material. See, how do you eliminate the problem of bottleneck? You identify bottleneck first. Where exactly the problem is? If there are multiple limiting factor, which one is the maximum limiting factor? Which one is maximum scarce in terms of supply? You find that out for it. Like for example, there are. Two assets. One is giving a shortfall of two hundred hours. Other one is giving me shortfall of three hundred hours. That means three hundred hours. If I take care of 
the first one which is hardly giving me a shortfall of 200 hours will be taken care of. So find out the bottleneck activity, find out which factor is exactly responsible, exploit the bottlenecks, exploit the bottlenecks means find out how effectively that can be used, how effectively, how, how productively that available resource can be used and then non bottleneck activities where there is no scarcity as such they are to be utilized in a proper manner elevate the bottleneck if you want to elevate the bottleneck you want to prolong the bottleneck then you will have to expand the capacity there is a bottleneck because there is a limitation you need 600 hours you have 500 hours that is why there is a bottleneck okay then instead of capacity of 500 get it increased to 600 your problem can be solved and then repeat the process if you repeat this, you will never be a, facing a problem of availability. So that was question number two for you guys. Let's go to question number three. Sierra Paper Mart is in process of getting ISO certificate. Wagera, 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 leave that part. Disposing, okay, for the purpose of getting certified, a cross-functional team is constituted, which is responsible, responsible for improving uh, environmental impact and uh, image of SPM and the company and as eco-friendly enterprise and control environment cost. So basically we are focusing on first half and second half of the relevant year and we are focusing on all environmental aspects. Disposing of, disposing of toxic material cost. 1.2 crores in second half which is 20 percent less than what was spent in the first half of the year. Hmm. So 1.2 is 80 percent. Twenty percent less so it is 80 percent. So 1.5 must be your disposing cost, disposal cost of H1, H1 1.5 crores and uh, H2 1.2 crores. Then you have uh, policy formulation budget 6 lakhs per annum, 6 lakhs per annum, 6 lakhs per annum is H1 3 lakhs and H2 3 lakhs. Ideally this should have been the case this is a budget but question says that for H1 utilization was 80 percent so this was actually utilized to the extent of 2.4 lakhs and this was utilized to the extent of 3.3 lakhs which is 110 percent. So 2.4 and 3.3 so these are my environmental prevention cost. Audit, audit means environmental detection cost, audit is on a half yearly basis at a time you are spending 8 lakhs in H2. We expand the production capacity and in the cost is 77.5. See. We are doing audit on half yearly basis that is the first thing. Then now we are going for quarter wise. Each audit cost you 8 lakhs so it is not even half yearly basis. Erection and other installation cost 7725 crores is the cost of the asset. Erection and installation cost is uh, 65 lakhs and uh, standard version of onboard rate is 76.20 crores, so 7620 lakhs. SPM is practicing the recycling policy, recycling policy, see this was about prevention, this was about prevention. But now 
if you talk about the next policy recycling policy this is also some type of detection policy so you detect and you recycle the review of recycling policy is pending for last 12 months and the cost incurred during the fiscal year was 2.75 crores spent on alignment to scrap generated during the year h2 in the second half contamination test was performed again that means you are detecting the environmental issues 4 lakhs was additional cost incurred monitoring cost is 78 lakhs which was during the year it was 78 lakhs in h2 it was double so if it was 1 rupee in h1 it is 2 rupees in h2 second half of the year is double so 1 is to 2 will be the ratio for first half and second half allocate the cost analyze environmental cost and evaluate whether the cross functional team is successful in serving the full terms of references now if you want to allocate these cost structures as i have already classified them see creating environmental policies they told us 6 lakhs per annum was the cost so 3 lakhs 3 lakhs we allocated out of first 3 lakhs 80 percent was utilized so that comes to 2.4 that comes to 2.4 and out of next 3 110 percent was utilized so it comes to 3.3 then this was an asset which was used this was the cost which was incurred in order to protect the environment but 7620 was already available so net cost the additional cost which is incurred is only 40 then you have monitoring cost given in the question 78 lakhs and we decided to allocate that in the ratio 1 is to 2 then you have other cost structures mentioned audit wise per audit one audit cost you one audit cost you 8 lakhs in the second half they decided not to go for six monthly audit but to go for quarterly audit so in the first half one audit was carried on for all the six months and in the second half since there are two quarters in the second half 8 lakhs and 8 lakhs 16 lakhs will be charged accordingly the cost is calculated now you have total 275 you have total 3000 in the first half and 2000 as scrap generated so might as well the ratio of 3 is to 2 is the perfect ratio for allocating 275 lakhs cost which is related to scrap allocation and that is what the data which is used see my 275 got allocated in that ratio 3 is to 2 3000 2000 toxic material data we have a total and the calculation now they have asked us to analyze uh, elements of environmental cost see understand how you are supposed to write the total cost incurred is 345 lakhs against this and then you have you are supposed to give the breakup that is why you have to take the total cost and then you have to find out percentages related to each aspect like first one is prevention second one is detection and third one is internal failure cost where you actually generate the wastage you actually generate the scrap which is required to be split which is required to be scattered which is required to be charged which is required to be allocated period wise and just simply quote the percentage that's it and third one was evaluation uh, we were supposed to evaluate whether the cross functional team is uh, successful in serving the terms of reference in the context of improving the image of company the policy document which also said zero discharge of waste in order to true sense of uh, eco-friendly enterprise and same is also visible from the environmental cost of statement as there is no environmental external failure cost see there is no external failure cost there is an internal failure cost so what you can do is you can successfully you are successfully serving the terms of the reference what are the terms of the reference see 
we were looking out for improvement in the environmental impact and uh, of course the image of the company. Now, in the context of controlling the environmental cause, the term attained uh, to for reasonable reduction in environmental cost. Your environmental cost has gone down. Impact of environmental cost statement is low because incremental cost due to purchase of premium version of plant, which will benefit to reduce the waste in the long run. So, I think uh, you can easily conclude that we are serving the terms of the reference. Now, let us go to the next one. This is based on performance pyramid. Now, guys, when you talk about performance pyramid, you just need to understand this one. Your major concern is uh, external effectiveness and uh, internal effectiveness. Now, when you talk about external effectiveness, you are supposed to satisfy your end customer. So, quality and timely delivery, both are important for us. When you talk about internal effectiveness, your cycle time, time taken for producing one unit and uh, minimization of waste is the focus. How will you measure external effectiveness in terms of customer satisfaction? How will you evaluate cycle time and wastage on the basis of productivity and flexibility? so that uh, you can capture the market plus for you, even your financial goals can be achieved. So, Roadrunner is a trucking company that ships commercial goods for companies to various ports within the state of Gujarat. These ports facilitate further shipment of goods by sea to their final destinations. The company aims at maintaining good quality delivery standards good quality delivery standards to make its mark in the competitive environment it operates. The entire shipment of the company is for deliveries from various destinations within the state to one of the ports. During the truck's return journey, the company tries to have a shipment from the port to one of the major destinations within the Gujarat. In trucking jargon, the truck on the road without carrying any load is called deadheading because you are not generating any revenue. A trucking company will try to minimize kilometers covered in a deadhead because it is unproductive as we said. Therefore, the company has agents on the ground who can find appropriate shipments within a few days time. This way, the utility of the truck and productivity of each shipment journey improves. So, your internal effectiveness is taken care of so that your external effectiveness, yes, any which way you have achieved because you have a good quality delivery system, the delivery standards. For internal effectiveness, also you have worked hard, you have some tie-ups. All shipments thus far have been full truck load shipments. So, your truck is not going empty. So, there is no dead heading. The goods are collected from the clients are delivered directly to the destination ports. Advantage of full occupancy is a minimum handling of goods. Loading and unloading will be from the single vehicle and a fast delivery of goods with a minimum damage. Due to lower fuel prices, the company has been enjoying reasonable profits for business. However, fuel price have increased over the last few months. Due to economic slowdown, number of shipments have uh, been stagnant for a while. So, your cost has gone up, but revenue has been the same. There is a possibility of reduced size of shipments in the coming year. Therefore, the company plans to offer less than truckload shipments to many of its clients. Here, shipments by the clients will be larger than a parcel carrier can handle, but not enough to require full capacity utilization. Shipment loads from various clients will be collected at a common collection area and common destination port will be loaded into the truck and delivered at a specific port. Typically, a client is willing to wait for maximum 7 days from the time 
goods are handed over to the actual delivery at the port. The advantage of this type of shipment is that it facilitates smaller consignments to be shipped at economical cost to the company. This brings a flexibility in operations to business and at the same time due to smaller shipments the clientele base has to increase so that when the truck leaves on a shipment journey the capacity is fully utilized. The decision to introduce LTL shipments in addition to FTL shipments that means partial utilization instead of full utilization has been a strategic change in the company. The company handles about 15 percent of the total consignments in various ports. It wants to maintain and if possible grow the market share. However, competition is stiff in this sector and to get a larger clientel base it has increased its advertising expenditure to make the presence known in the market. Advertisement in specific trade publication membership on trucking load boards uh, that help to find the clientele online, participating in trade association events etc. The company plans to target mid sized companies as customers can give shipment load at regular intervals. Cost per kilometer is 200. Revenue per kilometer is 150. 10 days uh, receivable collection period. Average customer lifetime value is 20 lakhs and above. Target customer base would be mid sized companies having uh, shipments at regular intervals. The senior management of the company has been focused only on the financials. However, they now acknowledge that other non-financial metrics also need to be tracked in order to sustain and improve the business. To assess the company's performance under the LTL system, the below are the operational metrics. Customer claims filed for damaged goods. Time taken to resolve the claims, delays in delivery, number of days the truck was not on the road, average time taken to get the truck load under LTL, deadheads, kilometers during which no revenue was collected, number of orders turned down due to non availability of trucks, even that is a possibility route wise, ability to deliver within 7 days from the date of receiving client goods under the LTL systems. As a management consultant of the company, you plan to present the above information using performance pyramid, identify the corporate vision and market financial measures, briefly explain the rationale of the decision taken at the market and financial business unit level, classify the operation level in terms of quality, delivery, cycle time, waste metrics, also link them to level 3 of customer satisfaction, flexibility and productivity. Briefly assess how measures GNH, number of orders turned down and delivery within 7 days can impact the business. This is what the question is. So guys now if you talk about uh, the objective of this company basically you are planning to get the financial supremacy. 150 per kilometer is your contribution, you are earning 350, you are spending 200. So, the major concern here is the receivable. Since you are giving them 10 days credit period and the lifetime value of customers is 20 lakhs, a huge amount can be at risk. Like 20 lakhs you are supposed to recover and 10 days credit period is given the chances of uh, bad debts are more plus your liquidity is at stake. Now when you consider all these things the best option is quicker conversion should be focused upon. And as far as other things are concerned you are already focusing on the quality and the delivery and uh, 
the dispatch. So customer satisfaction is taken care of. This is about financial stability. So recovery period should be taken care of. Second part of the question is operational level measures to link the customer satisfaction and flexibility. Customer satisfaction, customer's claim, customer claims filed for damaged goods. Minimize this time taken to resolve the claims, the quality of service. Delays in delivery beyond the agreed delivery time. This is again focusing on delivery, such delays are to be minimized so that your customer satisfaction will be taken care of. Number of days truck was not on the road, it is a wastage of resources which should be minimized, you should improve the productivity. Average time taken to get the full truck load, this is cycle time, production time. Minimum level is required to improve the productivity. Deadheads, empty truck, unproductive transportation, again waste of resources. You recoup your revenue in such a manner that the unproductive period is taken care of probably by enhancing your rates, enhancing your journeys, so that overall impact of deadheads will be eliminated. Next is impact of measures of GNE. G was number of orders turned down due to non availability of trucks. Since you have no availability of trucks, you will not be able to execute customers orders. So your flexibility is at stake. So either you can go for rental basis or you can go for some other truck services, you can have a tie up with some other truck services so that the trucks will be made available for you. The tracking this metric can indicate the current capacity of trucks is sufficient to cater the demand from customers. Ability to deliver within 7 days from the date of receiving clients goods under LTL system. Faster is the delivery, wastage will be eliminated. Faster is the delivery, customer will be happy. This is what we are looking out for. So, it is all about, it is all about this performance pyramid. Just explain this, I do not mind uh, if you explain even this part, draw the diagram and just quote these points here. Quality, delivery, 7 days delivery, cycle time, deadheads or uh, empty trucks or not having enough trucks, so it is a wastage of opportunity, then the productivity and okay, you cannot provide trucks if there is extra truck required, so that is a concern of flexibility, customer satisfaction and so on. On financial, you can comment on um, changing the credit policy from 10 days to minimum days, so all these things can be explained. You first explain this, automatically once you explain this, your points related to this can be explained in the same solution. So that was your question number 4. Question number 5, Glen Electronics manufactures a wide range of electronic heaters and geysers. Glen was a popular name among the retailers and customers, but it keeps on losing the market share. The major reason in emerging competitors are offering economical product customers with similar features and quality. The market wherein uh, Glen operating is uh, price sensitive, hence adding more features and establish itself as a premium brand is not an option. The only possible choice left with Glen is to reduce prices for that uh, it needs to reduce the cost to maintain the profit margin. The cost management committee was constituted to study the scenario and recommend a solution to the board of studies. The committee based upon 
their study suggests a three phase solution out of which one is stress on enhancing manufacturing cycle from its current level of 62.5. Currently your manufacturing cycle is 62.5 percent. Okay. The committee collects the following data with help from the office of chief management accountant. Current batch waiting time is 4 days, time spent is 20 days, the batch processing time, the real processing time. Total time spent by the products waiting to be processed moved as uh, 6 days. Currently the time spent by making sure that the product are not defective is double that time spent in transferring the products between workstations. The board of directors based upon committee's report decided to apply cellular manufacturing to reduce unnecessary move time. Based upon decisions tasks are allocated to concerned financial managers. The managers and workers have shown their in resistance by stating, we are not convinced that cellular manufacturing reduces motions of on the production floor. Some workers even mention that they are not aware of the current batch inspection time and batch move time. Calculate current batch inspection time and batch move time. Calculate manufacture cycle time and uh, non value added time. Revise manufacturing cycle efficiency. If both batch inspection and batch move time cut down to half and what makes the cellular manufacturers capable of reduce motions on the production floor. Now, first of all, if you talk about your cycle to be 62.5 or 62.50, you need to find out the total time on the basis of this. So, 62.50 is the actual production time divided by total time available. If I talk about actual production time and total time available, then it is 20 days production time. Then you have 6 days waiting time and as far as uh, Inspection time and move time are concerned. It is double. Okay. So, if one is assumed to be x, the other one has to be 2x. So, 0 0.625 20 upon 26 plus. 3x sixteen point two five plus one point eight seven five x is equal to twenty. Twenty minus sixteen point two five. So, X will be two days. So, move time. 2 days inspection was double as they said. So, it will be 4 days. That is my first answer. What is asked in the second part? Manufacture cycle time and non value added time. Ah. Total time. 20 productive, 
six two four thirty days productive twenty so non value added will be twelve days non value added will be twelve days out of total thirty two days out of total thirty two days waiting time is six days production time is twenty days so that all will give you twelve days that will give you twelve days as non value added time now the third part what are they asking revise manufacturing cycle efficiency when they are cutting down half what is getting cutting down what is getting cut down inspection time and move time okay if inspection time and move time is getting cut down revised manufacturing ratio 20 upon Twenty plus waiting. This will not change. Instead of two days, it will be one. Instead of four, it will be two. So twenty upon twenty nine. Six eight point nine seven percent. Six eight point nine seven percent is your third answer. You are reducing it. Now, if I talk about the last one, what makes cellular manufacturing capable of reducing motions on the production floor? You need to know what is cellular manufacturing first of all. See, there will be a worker, and all machines will be assembled in this shape. So the movement outcome of one. is directly transfer to the second outcome of second will be directly transfer to the thumb one single person can take care of all production the entire production process so the motion from one place in the factory to another place in the factory that will be eliminated so cellular manufacturing will always have the advantage will always have the benefit where all your machines will be assembled together as one cell all related machines will be assembled together in one cell and that one entire cell will be operated by single operator so the movement part will be taken care of that will eliminate the time secondly when you talk about uh, reduction in time the fatigue the since there is less motion the fatigue to workers will also be less so they feel more energetic the productivity will increase because their efficiency will increase because of lesser fatigue and lesser uh, tiredness so these are the simple advantages which are supposed to quote wasn't a big deal as far as uh, concept is concerned the first three are practical which are very important and fourth one was like a theory for cellular marketing which they have been asking since long so let's go for the next one question number 6 micro guard industries limited is a renowned company for a unique range of thoughtfully engineered products designed to provide simplified solutions and upscale your home interiors mgil engaged in the manufacturing of power systems batteries wires cables and switch gears and modular switches etc But MGIL is largely famous for its wide range of voltage stabilizers. Each product is manufactured in a separate division. While the planning regarding the voltage stabilizers division for the first half of the fiscal year 2021 amid the outbreak of COVID-19, the board get through 
a report from the internal expert committee pertaining to crystal series of voltage stabilizers which says due to restricted availability of input factors on account of lockdown by the government only 40,000 crystal voltage stabilizers are expected to be manufactured and sold during the first half of fiscal against the normal capacity of 75,000 per quarter that to add 1,600 per unit. The normal capacity levels at which it incurs the following uh, cost to manufacture the and sell single unit of CVS. Okay, so this is what the cost structure is, material, labor, variable over it. So 575 material cost, 215 labor cost, 310 variable over it. So I would say Eight twenty per unit is your total variable cost per unit. One of the directors suggested, since migrant worker moved to the home state and expected to work, come back in three to five months. Uh, hence, it is better to temporarily discontinue the production for the first half of the fiscal. Another director support him, saying that it will give opportunity to our suppliers to clear the old stock available with them. On the reference by the board, you provide estimate to the management at one third fixed overheads at a normal capacity level is unavoidable. One third fixed is unavoidable and additional cost due to lockdown for six months and uh, resumption thereafter is 35 lakhs. Okay. So, first of all, Shall they continue? Shall they continue the production of CVS or temporarily discontinue the first half of the fiscal year? The qualitative factors which need to consider while deciding either discontinue or to continue, what are the minimum number of CVS that the VSD need, the company needs to manufacture and sell in order to economically justify the continuation of the production? So basically this question is about shutdown point. Basically this question is about shutdown point. So if you shut down, still some cost will be incurred. So let us find out a few things, let us find out the answer here. Guys, uh, you have a demand of 40,000 right now. You have a demand of 40,000. Okay. And uh, if you talk about the cost structure, guys, if you talk about cost structure, then it is 575, 215, and 310. 575, 215, and 310. Your total variable cost is 1100. Total variable cost per unit. Question already has told you selling price is 1600. If selling price is 1600 and uh, variable cost is 1100, contribution will be 500. So, your total contribution will be 40,000 units multiplied by 500 per unit. So, 200 lakhs, that means 2 crores is going to be the total contribution. I just need to take the fixed cost if I continue and my fixed cost I can clearly see and my fixed cost I can clearly need to find out from the question. See, 75,000 you are producing per quarter, 75,000 you are producing per quarter, that means 4 quarters per year, you will be able to produce 3 lakhs, 3 lakhs and you are talking about 6 months, so 1 lakh 50,000 for 6 months into 300 per unit. See guys, 
75,000 is your quarterly quantity into 4. 3 lakhs is your annual quantity multiplied by 300 because your absorption rate is always determined based on the annual cost. If it is 300 per unit for 3 lakh units, that means definitely your fixed cost must be 900 lakhs. For 6 months, it will be 450 lakhs. For 6 months, it will be 450 lakhs. Yeah, I will show you the calculation here. 75,000 units per quarter into 4. This is your quantity per annum into your absorption rate 300 per unit, but we want only for half fiscal, so around 450 lakhs. So this tells me that if my loss is going to be 250 lakhs. My loss is going to be 250 lakhs if I continued. If I shut down, if I shut down, one third is unavoidable. That means one third will be incurred anyhow. If I shut down, one third will be incurred anyhow. So, one third of 450 lakhs, 150 lakhs will be incurred anyhow plus restoration charges. Once you shut down the plant to restore the plant to restart the plant, there is an additional cost of say 35 lakhs given. So, ideally, if I shut down, my loss will be 185. If I shut down, my loss will be 185. If I continue, my loss will be 250. I think it is better to. shut down. So, on economic grounds, yes, we should shut down the plant because we can save the loss. On uh, qualitative factors other than uh, monetary factors, you may have to go through these things. Government advisory regarding uh, lockdown and lock deals, compliances, legal compliances. Now, if you are locking down, if you are shutting down the plant for 6 months, your relationship with the supplier and relationship with customer both will be affected. Your customer may feel that you are shutting down permanently. He, you may lose your customer because your customer may shift to your competitor's product. Your supplier may not trust you, may not continue with the same uh, discount offers or delivery offers which you are currently enjoying. Plus, it will have a high impact on morals of employees. They will be under a threat. They will be demotivated because of the uncertainty. They will start getting insecurity feeling. And plus, timing of shutdown needs to be considered because you never know exactly when the problem will be lifted up, when you can restart. Probably, it may so happen that in fact, during the shutdown period only, there will be a festival, there will be a demand for you. Like if your product has a huge demand during Diwali, your calculation says shut down. If you shut down, probably you would have earned, you would have got more demand, that part you are completely neglecting. And finally, discontinuing segment has adverse effect on the sale of product because If you are selling these products, probably after sale service will be into trouble, so people may not buy your product. And then the third part of this question, the next part of this question is, what should be the quantity so that we can uh, take a decision of shutting down the plant? Please understand one thing, your one unit gives you contribution of 500. Your one unit gives you contribution of 500, that means one unit is going to give you revenue of 500 units. Out of your total 450, see understand one thing, out of your total 450, out of your total 450, 185 is unavoidable fixed cost for you. So, out of total fixed cost of 450, if 185 is unavoidable, at least try to recover 265 from the customer. 
so in order to recover 265 at the rate of 500 53000 units are required to be sold now that means listen to me your fixed cost is 450 bare minimum fixed cost is 185 see i cannot go below this i have to incur 185 then in that case what i am trying to do here is i am just trying to recover i am just trying to produce a quantity which will recover this cost for me so if my quantity is more than 53000 that means i can recover some part of it i will not shut down i'll continue but if my quantity is going down even at below 53 i would shut down because there is no point in continuing that is what they have mentioned in the last part there is no need to go for this this calculation this is what we had discussed unavoidable fixed cost you take which you cannot avoid due to any reason so take unavoidable fixed cost remove it from your total fixed cost you will be left with avoidable fixed cost so your avoidable fixed cost will be divided by contribution per unit if you can reach this quantity structure that means you are recovering this e 185 to any which way i'm going to lose so at least i'll try to recover something more 265 or whatever that extra calculation so avoidable fixed cost you consider divided by contribution per unit that's how the formula is derived we have calculated it here see 450 are going to incur right now 185 minimum okay so for additional 265 you are continuing the business so you will continue only if you are crossing 53 because if you cross 53 even that 265 will be recovered and only 185 will be 185 will be your loss that's fine 185 is the final loss figure you cannot have loss less than that so at least produce more on more and recover the cost which is avoidable like for example i have a staff i have to pay them but i can always surrender my premises and save my rent so rent is avoidable cost staff salary is unavoidable cost that unavoidable i have to bear i'm not thinking about it i will produce i will continue when i can recover the rent so that avoidable part is important for me avoidable part is important for me that was your question on decision making yeah they have jumbled with the solution question on numbers so kindly take care of it i have given you the solution also question number seven it's on pricing strategy Zutus Limited is a leading Indian pharmaceutical company which is fully integrated global healthcare provider with in-depth domain expertise uh, in the field of healthcare it has strong capabilities across the spectrum of the pharmaceutical value chain Zutus has earned a reputation worldwide amongst the pharmaceutical companies for providing comprehensive and complete healthcare solutions one of the drugs RIFMN is an antibiotic used to treat uh, contagious disease TBs. It is patented medicine and the patent for which is now going to expire and several other competitors are expected to enter in the market for selling the medicine using the same components of chemicals under the different other name. In order to reposition itself in the market, the company is reviewing pricing policy. The market research indicates that every 4 rupees decrease in price, the demand would fall by 8000 batches. So this is a slope. So 4 divided by 8000, that gives me... 0 0.0005 as slope change in price divided by change in quantity the maximum demand is uh, 10 lakh million batches means 10 lakh batches is your maximum demand look at the material cost saltx 367 0.5 grams at 
0.08 so that comes to 29.4 per batch 301.5 into 0.4 that comes to 301.5 into 0.4 120.6 each batch takes 30 minutes in terms of machine running 40 rupees per hour is the rate so this will be another 20 rupees fixed overheads are expected to be 35 per batch skilled workforce is to be shifted on to the production uh, which costs millions of rupees to develop the average labor cost is 38.60. So, let me first calculate the variable cost of this product. It is 208, variable cost is 208.6 per batch. Fixed cost we do not consider because it is not a per unit cost which is incurred. Calculate optimum selling price and uh, resulting the annual profit which will make from changing this price. So, we are not aware of the price. Since we are not aware of the price, let me find out the price first. So, when my price is uh, 0, my demand is maximum. 0 0.00. 0, 0.5 is the slope and 10 lakhs is the quantity. That gives me A as pricing. When price is 500, I am selling 10 lakh units. So, now since I want to know the pricing, but I do not have a quantity structure, we will be going for MR is equal to MC formula which is A minus 2 BQ. We already know variable cost which was calculated while reading the question 208.6. 208.6 is a variable cost which is 500 minus 2 0 0.0005. Zero point zero zero one Q will be left this side and five hundred minus two zero eight point six will be at this side minus two ninety one point four. So ideally Q is equal to two ninety one four hundred. Now, you already know the quantity, the batches, number of batches you are supposed to produce. So, P is equal to A minus BQ, 500 minus 0 0.0005 into 291400. So, pricing should be 354.30. Pricing should be 354.30. They have also asked us to calculate profit. So, you can prepare another statement. I am doing in rough. You can always uh, write it in a fair way. Two ninety one four hundred multiplied by 354.3 per batch. So, 1032.4302 in lakhs minus variable cost 208.6297.8604 lakhs.
contribution four twenty four point five six nine eight lakhs. How much is the fixed cost? So fixed cost is thirty five per batch for a batch size of three lakhs. So three lakhs into thirty five. Three one nine point five six nine eight lakhs is the profit. The only important point was knowing the, the initial price when the demand is ten lakhs maximum demand. Now, what have they asked for apart from this? Recommend pricing strategy for launching of new antiviral drug. If you are launching a new drug, same chart which we have discussed in the beginning of the chapter, if it is a new drug, not having much variation, not having much additional point, not having much uh, new characteristic as such, then go for penetration pricing. If you think that uh, it is going to be uh, market changing experience if you think that it has some special unique feature then you may also go for skimming pricing. But if you ask me the current scenario you still have patent that means entry is restricted and you are anticipating that once your patent is over in the long run or probably in the short span there will be new entry. So, by that time you charge the skimming price, recover maximum profit as you can and stay peacefully, capture the market, recover your entire money from the market and go for it. So, as per current scenario, since the patent is still available, the entry is restricted and uh, since there is a huge investment involved, you should always go for skimming. So, that was your pricing question. The next concept is just in time, question number 8, X sells MU50 to its customer, it purchases it is from Y at 140 per unit. So, I would say it is a buying cost, Y pays all freight to X, okay. So, we are not charging it, no incoming inspection is necessary because Y has a superb reputation of the delivery of quality merchandise. Annual demand is uh, 13,000 units which is A for me, annual requirement to be purchased, X requires 15 percent annual ROI. The purchase order lead time is 2 weeks, lead time means delivery of uh, time interval between placement of order and delivery of material. The purchase order is passed through EDI and it costs 2 rupees per order. O. Now, as far as uh, buying cost is concerned, it is uh, 140. So, if I am paying 140, I am blocking my 140 which cannot be invested anywhere. So, carrying cost is always carrying cost whenever it is given in terms of percentage, carrying cost whenever it is given in terms of percentage, it is always applied on buying cost. You are buying something for 140, that means you have paid 140, your 140 is blocked, you cannot invest 140 anywhere, so you have lost an opportunity of recovering 15 percent of that 140, so that is carrying cost. Material handling 3.10 per unit, X has decided whether or not to shift to JIT purchase, has to decide whether to go for JIT or continue with normal. Y agrees to deliver 100 units. 130 times a year, 5 times every 2 weeks instead of existing delivery time of 1000 units, 13 times with an additional amount of 0 0.02 per unit. Okay, So, there will be a little change in the buying cost, revised buying cost will be 140.02 revised buying cost. X incurs no stock out 
under current purchasing policy, it is estimated that X incurs stock out on 50 units under JIT. Okay. In the event of stock out, X has to rush order which cost 4 per unit. Briefly comment whether X should implement JIT or not. JIT means no inventory. No inventory that means you are exposed. No inventory that means you are exposed to the risk of being out of stock. Okay. So, what we can do is we can have a simple comparison here. We can have a simple comparison here of both the options current policy as well as current policy as well as JIT. Okay. Let me first go for purchase cost. Now, I am preparing statement of cost for buying my annual requirement of 13,000 units for buying my annual requirement of 13,000 units. So, my calculation here says if I am buying 13,000 units, 13,000 will be purchased at 140, but if I am going for JIT, since they have said they will be charging 2 paise more, it will be 140 into 0 02. So, 18 lakh 20,000 will be incurred here. And 18 lakh 20,260 will be incurred if you go for the other option. Then I have to take care of ordering cost. They clearly said 13 orders into 2 rupees per order. But whereas, uh, if you go for the other calculation, it will be 130 orders into 2. So, instead of 26, you will end up spending 260. But yes, the advantage here is carrying cost will be too high. Carrying cost will be too high. Now, see, there will be 13 orders for 13,000 units. There will be 13 orders placed for 13,000 units. That means average quantity per order is 1,000. So, when we receive 1,000 units, I am not going to hold 1,000 units every day. See, 13,000 is my annual requirement. 13 orders will be placed. That means quantity per order will be 1,000 units. I will receive 1,000. Every day there will be consumption. There is no one particular quantity which will be held throughout the year. So, we always go for average. And uh, of course, that average is going to be multiplied by 15 percent of buying cost, which is 21. So, 21 into 500, it is going to be 10,500 here. But if there are 130 orders placed, there will be only 100 units order. So, average inventory will also be only 50 and this time 140.02 into 15 percent, 21.003 will be your carrying cost. Whenever carrying cost is given in terms of percentage, it is to be applied on buying cost. Earlier, I was blocking 140. I was losing 15 percent of 140. Now, I am blocking 140.02. So, I am blocking 140.02. So, I am losing opportunity of recovering 15 percent of 140.02. That comes to 21.003 into 50 units. My carrying cost will be hardly 1050. I am rounding it off to the nearest rupee. And then there is a stock out cost. They have clearly said they will be out of stock by 50 and 4 rupees per unit is stock out cost which will be incurred here. 
since I am having enough stock, since I am bearing a huge carrying cost, I will never be out of stock. Enough stock is placed with me. And then uh, you also have some other expenses, other carrying costs and all which are mentioned in the question. See, 3.10. So, other carrying cost, 1000 upon 2 into 3 by 10 and 100 upon 2 into 3.10. So, 500 into 3.10, 1550 will be recorded here and 155 will be recorded here. Now, there is no other cost structure involved. So, let me get the complete total here. 18 lakh 20 thousand plus 26 plus 30 thousand plus 1550. 18.32076. 18.32076. 076 and here 18 20 260 plus 260 plus 1050 plus 200 plus 155 18 21 18 21 925 okay so there is a saving in cost of rupees 10,151. Hmm. So, conclusion, you can write conclusion now, JIT system must be implemented, simple, just see the solution here and I hope you understood the logic behind everything. So, that was your Question number 8. Question number 9. IPL is a leading manufacturing company and uh, under increasing pressure to reduce cost, to control inventory, to control inventory level and to improve services. The costing department has recently undertaken a decision to implement JIT system. The management of IPL is convinced of the benefits of their changes. But supplies manager W fear with this costing department decision. He said, we have been driven by suppliers for years. They would insist that we could only purchase in thousands, that we would have to wait weeks and uh, that they would only deliver on Mondays. Comment on uh, W's viewpoint. See, so the scenario is such that they are delivering only on Mondays. See for successful operation, okay, uh, your JIT system is generally selected because I can order smaller quantities frequently, so that my inventory cost is eliminated, okay. Now, Rather than um, periodic purchase like monthly, quarterly, fortnightly or weekly, we will order material as and when it is required. Now, if you go for frequent orders, your suppliers may not be comfortable with it because they must be having their own cycle of dis dispatch. They can also have their cycle of dispatch if you think from their perspective and secondly, if you are buying a lesser quantity for them it is not beneficial as well. So, you can say that the doubt of Mr. W is relevant, your suppliers may not agree for this adjustment. This was hardly a one or two mark question. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर टेन द फॉलोइंग आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ मंथली कंट्रोल रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम सी ए फर्म द बजेटेड कलेक्शन फॉर द ईयर इज फोर क्रोर्स फोर्टीन लैक्स ग्रॉस कलेक्शन देर आर थ्री एक्टिविटीज वन इज अकाउंटिंग सेकेंड वन इज ऑडिटिंग थर्ड वन इज टैक्सेशन एक्सपेक्टेड is given as budget the recent forecast is also mentioned that means there is a planning variance of 690 favorable 2070 adverse and 1104 adverse actual collection is given on monthly basis for the month of july identify the control system for both types of reports okay so basically there are two types of control if you recollect one is feedback control and the other one is feed forward control feedback control is something which is dependent on the activities which are happened in past or in reality and then you take a corrective step feed forward control means feed forward control means when you anticipate some changes to be there and you change the budget only or change the standards according to it so we can clearly see that for type x feed forward control is implemented because they have anticipated three figures and they have change those three figures they have revised those three figures as i said it was a planning variance sort of thing but in case of type y we are comparing budget with actual something that has really that that has happened so this is a feed back control first one was feed forward control and this one is feed back control of course for one organization both can be implemented but currently as per the given data type x has a feed forward control and type y has a feed back control because the comparison is with actual and in case of type x we have revised the standard we have revised the budget that means you are anticipating some change in the future so it is feed forward control based on some anticipated activities you have changed the budget just like your planning variances in case of standard costing that is your question number 10 oh this is a very simple question this is from our jkc textbook only t is operating uh, its entire business through four customers t1 t2 t3 t4 t1 and t2 are small pharmaceutical stores and t3 and t4 are large discount stores so there are four customers two segments small which has t1 t2 large which has t3 t4 t3 prices its product at 25% above the variable cost so once you know the variable cost you can simply add 25% you'll get a sales value although all four customers demand and receive a sizable discount of the list price the finance officer of k has been asked to undertake the customer profitability analysis and that shows that from each customer and from each channel stand alone pharmaceutical and large attached to discount stores mr k identifies 20250 of general administration cost for small pharmaceutical so this is not given for customers this is given segment wise and even 48375 is given for large which is not related to t3 and t4 it is a combined cost to be charged to the large segment so number of orders for order size is 40000 so naturally the sales will be 160 now guys if the sales is 160 40000 into 4 40000 into 4 160000 will be the sales now question says that your sales is variable cost plus variable cost plus 25% so that means this is 125% of variable cost 25 will be the contribution simply go for cross multiplication and you will be able to get the contribution figure 
because ultimately we are interested in profit. If you are interested in profit, there is no need to waste time on calculation of variable cost. Variable cost is 100, profit will be 25, naturally sales will be 125 percent. That means the sales of 160, the sales of 180 are 125 percent. So, if 125 percent is sales, 25 percent is contribution, I can directly calculate contribution. 5 percent of sales figure will be given as a discount and then I have 375 into 4, 375 into 9, 375 into 6, 375 into 3 as my cost allocated based on cost drivers. Again, 1250 into 2, 1250 into 2 will be another cost to be deducted and once you deduct that you will be getting the profit. See how we have calculated it. Yes. So, 1,60, 1,80 like that T3, T4 has also given you some change, some sales value. Discount is applied as per the percentages, we got contribution. What you can do is you can first get the contribution, then you can deduct discount, it is one and the same, your final answer is going to be the same. Then order processing cost as per the cost drivers you have applied. Number of orders into cost per order has been done to get the order processing cost calculated and ultimately you are getting the profit. Now they have asked us to evaluate these things. Now see, despite of high sales value, profit is low. The product in small as well as large, which is registering maximum sales in terms of value is actually giving minimum profit. Reason being, your number of orders are very high, your number of orders are very high as compared to the other department, your deliveries are very high. In case of T3, your expedited delivery is also there, so you can always convince your customer to go for a regular delivery. You can see the huge discount given as compared to the other product. So, you can negotiate discount strategy, you can negotiate number of orders to be placed, you can apply just in time or you can apply something else whereby your number of orders will be reduced. Then you can reduce your regular deliveries and the most important thing is in case of T3, you can force your customers or convince your customers to go for regular delivery rather than expedited delivery because it costs you 2500 unnecessarily. That is what they have mentioned in the question. That is what they have mentioned in the solution. See, negotiate smaller discount, increase order size, reduce number of expedited deliveries, simple. Order size if you increase, Babu, if you increase order size, number of orders will go down. That is what I said, reduce number of orders means start ordering more in one lot. So, an automatically number of orders will go down. So, that was your question number 11, but chalo, let us go to question number 12. So, very small question. In the context of balance scorecard, identify the perspectives of the following independent situation. Balance scorecard, if you recollect, it has uh, several perspectives like customer perspective, learning and growth perspective, then you have internal uh, business perspective. So they are just talking about those perspective. Now, it is a courier company and it is trying for 100 percent on time priority, then it has to be towards the satisfaction of the customer, so customer perspective. Tuition center set up class on internet facility for better reach. It is for better reach, that means it is learning and growth, whereby you are expanding your market by training your staff. Computer manufacturing company setting up a device centers in all major cities for after sales support. Set up service center in all major cities for after sales support. This can be customers perspective also, but more than that it is 
internal business perspective basically you are upgrading your system you are upgrading your methods of operations and government taxation department says that it has working towards ensuring the computer training to its officers that is again learning and growth that's it that was your question number 12 Let's go to the last one. Question number thirteen: The research and development wing of Electronics Limited has developed a new kind of energy-efficient inverter motor with five-star rating from Bureau of Standards of Energy for use in uh, industrial generator. The initial trials noted that it would take ten hours for first motor, which is subject to, which is subject to learning of AT. Okay, so my initial time taken is. 10 hours the cost of material per motor is 2500 labor charges 175 per hour overheads amounted to 125% of labor the first order received is for delivery of eight motors okay calculate price of the company to be quoted at a profit margin of 20% on sales guys we need to first find out time required because unless we know time required we can't find out labor cost and unless we find out labor cost we will not be able to find out overheads and uh, even total cost will not be calculated so we are going for uh, number of hours required calculation of number of hours calculation of number of hours we already know that as and when you double the production average time required reduce so 10 will go down to 8 8 will go down to 6.4 and uh, 6.4 will go down to 0.8 5.12 so naturally total hours will be 10 16 18 40.96 so guys my total time required for 8 units is going to be 40.96 80% is a learning curve applied learning applied so learning is applied when the quantity is doubled so statement of cost if you want to prepare or statement of selling price if you want to go for it will start with material how much is your material cost 2500 material cost is 2500 your labor cost is 40.96 hours are required see as per normal calculation 10 hours per unit that means 8 units ideally you would have taken you 80 hours like till ca enter knowledge if you implement here but you know the impact of learning curve guys learning curve if you implement your 8 units will be just producing 40.96 hours 175 per hour is the rate of labor so that comes to 7168 okay your material cost is 2500 okay this is this is per motor okay if this is per motor naturally we are talking about eight motors so 2500 per motor into eight that comes to 20000 okay then we have overheads to be absorbed at the rate of 125% of labor so that can also be calculated 8960 Eight nine six zero plus seven one six eight plus twenty thousand thirty six one twenty eight. 
36,128 is the total cost. How much is the profit involved? Profit involved is 20% on sales. Guys, profit involved is 20% on sales. 20% on sales is one fifth on sales. One fifth on sales means when sales is five, profit is one and cost will be four. So it will be one fourth on cost. So 9032 is the profit required. Forty five one sixty will be the sales value of all eight machines. Price per unit. If you want to calculate, you can five six four five. If at all you want to, otherwise cost of eight machines you can directly charge forty five one sixty or you can say five six four five per unit. So this is your calculation of total number of hours for producing eight machines. One unit cost you 2500 in terms of material, then labor overheads are 125 percent of labor, even that is recorded. Then we have uh, sales, 20 percent on sales it was. So you can have another calculation also, this is 100, this is 20, this is 80 and then you can go for cross multiplication, it is one and the same, 36, 128 divided by 80 percent will also give you the same answer. We did something else, logical application, 20 percent on selling price, that means one fifth on sales, sales is five, profit is one, that means cost is four, one fourth on cost, that can also be applied, suit yourselves, but this is your answer. Selling price of the order or selling price per unit, whatever, that is your answer. So guys, here we go, that was your RTP for November 23 and I am sure your paper is going to be fantastic, just focus properly on all the chapters. I feel this time they may ask you 50-50, 50 practical, 50 theory, they may ask you 50-50, 50 percent 50 50 practical, 50 percent theory. The trend so far was 75 percent theory, 25 percent practical, but I feel they may change it this time. Just a prediction, I am not 100 percent sure about it, but then you should not leave anything for option. All theory chapters must be done in a proper manner. All theory chapters, if you talk about theory, theory is going to be important. Lean system has to be studied, GIT has to be studied lean GIT and your last chapter performance measurement and evaluation. You must study this learning curve, yes I am expecting learning curve and standard costing combination or even in case of pricing and uh, learning curve. We have covered all these questions in the classwork, you can go through that for your doubts will always be there. All the best guys and I am sure you are going to crack this. Remember please do not leave anything for option. At least one question will be there on standard, one question will be there on decision making, one question might be there on pricing and divisional pricing as well. So do well, have a nice time, take care, bye bye.